and proud to say this podcast is sponsored by Discover Delicious, an online shop for the finest in Welsh food, drink and foodie experiences from independent producers around Wales. Discover Delicious is the largest collection of Welsh food and drink online. Go to www.discoverdelicious.wales to see more. Hello and welcome back to the Kitchen Clonk podcast, a podcast all about good food, good drink and good company. Now joining me today is a Cardiff-based clothes designer, a tailor, a maker of bespoke garments for men and women who's dressed the likes of TV and film stars and sports personality. My guest today is the very cool and very talented Nathan Palmer. Hi. Hello. Thank you very much for joining me on the podcast. Pleasure, anytime. I thought it'd be really interesting to interview Nathan because I think there's a lot of similarities between the worlds of food and drink and what you do. So aesthetics in terms of um, clothing and tailoring. And on that point of aesthetics, how something looks. So it's very important in your line of work. Do you think that's as important when you're going to eat or drink something? Yeah, um, it's all about presentation. Yeah. Um, Because I suppose as soon as I see something which is presented well on a plate, yeah, it's like you automatically like pick yourself up because you're gonna in, you know yeah you're gonna enjoy the experience. I think so. so. I totally understand. So for, you, for you, the way the food looks is important. Oh yeah, definitely. I also think that because it, it kind of gives an impression that thought has gone into this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and when you translate that to the world of clothing, like you uh, you are in, do you think the way something? Uh, looks in terms of it's not only the look but it's how they make it how it makes them feel as well yeah um so for me it's all about the experience as well yeah. because the easiest part for me is the actual making of the clothes okay but then before there's a whole preparation so it's like coming up with a concept yeah um once you've come up with a concept do, do i add multiple yeah um so i can give it variations if i'm happy with that then um then I'm going into like the designing stage of pulling in different things, adding different features, different details. And then um, from there, that's when you go into the makeup of it. And then once it's made, once it looks good on the client, yep. then I can be happy. And in that regard, is service when you go out to eat and drink important to you? So if you had a beautiful looking plate of food, but were treated horribly, yeah, not for you? Uh, no, 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 it wouldn't be for me myself personally. Um, but it's like, yeah, the, how the food looks, uh, settings, uh, presenting, um, customer rapport, yeah. you know, all those kind of things. There's often an argument that some people say that as long as the food is great, mm. they don't really care about anything else. Whereas I, I'm, I'm with you, if I'm treated horribly when I'm there, yeah. I probably am not likely to recommend it. Yeah, because the thing is as well, because we're we're all busy, yeah. so you're putting time aside yeah. to go and have a good evening. So yeah. you pretty much want it to go well from start to finish. Yeah, so, yeah. so this, yeah, service, I believe, as well, is, is where it's at, really. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. Um, because if the chef is doing everything in yeah. the kitchen yeah. and the kitchen team, if when you get it delivered to your table, things are not, you're not happy, mm. or being made uh, happy, then, it, yeah, I think it throws things off. Yeah, because I will definitely go back to a place if the service has been good because it's a happy memory for me you know even if the food wasn't up to par yeah but then i had a great time with my partner no problem i think you hit on a really important point there food memories i think mm-hmm. when we go out to eat and drink um the way we enter the building our first impressions and when we leave our last impressions are so important absolutely, aren't they you know absolutely. just take someone to say good night or have yeah. a good evening yeah, yeah, um, and can make all the difference talk about food memories i i'm very much a believer that food and drink can take you to a certain point in your past mm-hmm. um what would you say would be your most fond earliest food memories from your childhood or do you know what it's like um it remained my favorite go-to meal now. So it's like, um, I've been doing athletics, I've been training, you're coming home late. So then obviously my mum's gonna cook up something really quickly. Yeah. So then on the plate, there would be chips, sausage, eggs <laughs> and beans, and tomato sauce, Yeah. done. Bread and butter. Yeah. So happy. I love that. Happy. Because yeah, your mum knew you'd eat it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no fussing, everyone's no gonna fussing. be happy. So, and you know when you've when you 
describing that meal, where are you eating that? Where are you eating that? Has it taken you to a point in your yeah, mind? Yeah, I can see um, the table where we used to sit down and eat as a family. Even though at that time could it be late in the evening, I'll yeah. be eating by myself. Yeah. It's still a warm place. Yeah. You know, and it brings back fond memories of just remembering that. And now I feel like I want to go home and make that meal now, you know? That's so cool because, yeah, yeah you said that and I can picture you just sitting there. It's a simple meal. Yeah. A simple, quick oven, maybe frying pan, microwave, whatever. But it, it's what it means to you, to it, isn't it? what it means to me. And yeah. you said about going home and making that. It, do you like to cook? Are you into I, cooking? Do you know what? I do really, really like to cook. See, I'm the kind of guy that if I know I'm cooking a meal where I'm having guests, yeah. I would season it the night before. Okay, so fine. So it's got the overnight. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Then it goes, Get the marinade. Go into the marinade. Yeah. And I, I, again, it's just all down to preparation. Do, do you have a particular style or do you like to mix it up a little bit? Do you know what? I'll mix it up. And then even if I'm going from my cupboards and I see something which could actually work with it, yeah. I'll chuck it in. If it doesn't work, it doesn't <laughs> like take that. that great that time. I like that. That's fine, I won't do it again. So not a recipe kind of person, just go by no. feel a little bit. Do you know what? I have been on Google. Okay. <laughs> but even even if I do follow the recipe, yeah, it always changes. Yeah, it always changes. So if somebody had to say, what's your, uh, for example, your signature dish, what would you say? Oh God, it's probably the generics, the bolognese. Yeah, yeah. Thai green curry. Um, oh, there's um, there's that cheese which has got like that white thing, and you pop it in the oven. Oh, one. like camembert. That's nice. Okay, fine. Yeah, 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 do you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? The olives, the wine, it's just all those kind of foods. So I, uh, you've got two boys? I've got two boys and one girl. Two boys, uh, what kind of food do they like to have? They like Caribbean food. Yeah? Oh, um, whenever um, we go over to my nan's, yeah, yeah. Obi's always asking for dumplings. Absolutely. Which is like, <laughs> you yeah. know. Is he I okay mean, with spicy food? Nathan loves spicy food. Yeah. So that's my middle boy. Um, the hotter the better. Yeah, yeah. And then Monaco, she's quite plain, but she's at that age now where she started year seven, yeah. so she's really fussy. Do, do, do you eat much Caribbean food still? Yeah, yeah. Is I it eat... only when you go around to Nans or...? I, I would, it would say that, or Christmas yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, when the family gets together. Um, and then other than that, I'll probably just go to like the local Caribbean restaurants. Yeah. Mm. Any recommendations? Because yes. largely lots of our yes. listeners and watchers yes. are from Cardiff. There's a really good one called Big K's. Big K's? Okay. And he is down Butown All right, Community that, that. Centre. All right, that Big uh, K's. And the thing is, it's like, um, while well, you'll pay for your meal, it's yeah. like £7. Yeah, yeah. But you can actually pay that amount in a McDonald's. Yeah. But you know, once you've eaten this Caribbean food, yeah, you will it's want like it. you want to go home and just put your feet up. Kind of thing, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, and did mum used to cook Caribbean food? Yeah, 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 all the time. But she's not as good as my nan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and she'll admit that. She was happy with that. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, she's, she's fine with that. She's yeah. fine with that. She, she knows the hierarchy. Do you like the spicy food too, or...? I don't mind spicy food. It's OK. Yeah. But if I had a choice, wouldn't choose her. See, my my mum, she's getting worse with age. Really? Like, chilli sauce and everything. Oh, wow. I swear, at one point, my mum used to take a bottle of chilli sauce mm. with her. She wow. just, oh, oh, on, on everything. Wow. Yeah, cos you do have... Um, Dunn's, I think it's Dunn's River um, hot pepper sauce. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. Hot. Absolutely. Hot. I mean, it's it's lovely to hear that, you know, even though there's this, um, the, the Caribbean food uh, influence there, mm -hmm. it's the sausages, chips. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, white bread with butter. That's it. It's, um, it's the simple things, really. It's the simple things that can just make you feel content. So. Home for you is Panoff. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. And we're here in your beautiful studio. How long have you been here? So I've been here just over three years now. Okay, yeah. lovely. Um, but before that, I was online with okay. a commercial brand. Okay. And then I studied at university in 2007. Okay, fantastic. Mm. And how has the response been? Uh... Do you know what? This is, the response has been positive. Um, but we're at the day and age now where I'm just a click away. Yeah. Or I'm just an inquiry on an email. And like I've had people come down from Liverpool, Manchester, yeah. Scotland. So it doesn't matter where I'm at. Um, I can still, you know, provide a service. So you, do you visit people if you need to? Yeah, yeah. That, oh, when I first started, I was on the road all the time. But it was like getting on the mega bus at like 4 a.m. Ah. to get, you know, to get to London. Because <laughs> yeah. you know it's going to be like a five hour journey. And then I would like bring my suitcase with my fabrics, measuring tape, 
tablet. So, so a lot of life on the road. A lot of life lot on the road. Service stations. <laughs> it, it was fine because I just know it was all part of the process. Yeah. Because, you know, in order for me to do that, then it's enabled me to kind of open things here. If yeah. You know what I mean. So I'm paying your dues. Paying my dues. Getting yeah. the experience. And I'm still paying my dues now because it's like I'm still doing 18 hour days sometimes. Gosh. So it's fine. That's incredible. But mm. I think much like food, much like chefs, you, you have a craft, oh, you yeah. have a skill, and you have to keep on doing yeah. it. To and you're keep always on improving. learning as well because it's like, um, yourself, you might come across another chef, then you might, oh, that's quite a good idea. Yeah. It's like with me, myself now, I'll be on like the social media and I'll see someone from Italy or Portugal and then they've created or done a certain stitch in a certain way and I'm like, oh, I'll have a go with it. I'll see if I can do it. And that's what I, I just learn. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, mm. I, I think that's, you've hit the nail on the head. There's nothing, you have to keep on learning. You mm. have to learn from other people when it yeah. comes to either food or drink or anything like that, having influence mm. from other people is important, yeah. you know. For example, my, my Gujarati background influences a lot of my cooking, but I'm a bit of a magpie when it comes to food. I yeah. like different Amazing. styles. Yeah. Are there any particular de uh, designers that uh, you draw influence from or? Oh, so it depends on mood I'm in. Um, so obviously if I'm like wearing my suits to work, yeah. then I like people like Tom Ford. Yeah. Um, also Bo Tang. I also like influences from like Vivian Westwood, you know, cause she's, she's been able to like penetrate that punk rock and still bring it into like fashion. Then if it's like, if I'm chilling out with the kids yeah. and I wanna dress down a little bit, I like people like Off-White. Okay, cool. Givenchy, yeah. you know, those kind of brands. Cause then it's mixing different styles and bring them together. So it's all. And okay, you so. hold these um, events, don't you? Yes, these yeah. shows. Yes. And you were due to have your which show is this? Your third. Uh, so this would have been our fourth fashion fourth show. Fourth one. Okay. So this was called 1600s Fashion Fusion. Okay. So what we were doing, we took the inspiration from fashion back in the 1600s. Okay. And then brought it up to trend with like different colors and pulling them both together to create an online collection. And you, you um, this is a gala dinner as well. Yes, so has, yes. Uh, did I read you had James Summerin? So James Summerin was last year. Oh, that's right, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so this year we have a chef called John Quill. Okay. And he's like a VIP chef and he does like dinner parties. Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, for people who don't know, James Summerin has a Michelin star restaurant mm -hmm. here in Panath. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the only ones near, uh, well, near Cardiff. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in Cardiff. Um, but I want to ask you um, also, coming back to the meals and um, things like Michelin star restaurants, which one, or well, what would you say is your best meal that you've ever had no so this is not like your fantasy meal a meal yeah. you've actually had or mm. most memorable meal that you've had oh um oh god i went to um a steakhouse um just outside Cambran. <laughs> really? I, I, think it, I, wasn't, I yeah. wasn't expecting that. No. I thought you were going to say like the Ritz or something like no, that. No, because I love steak. Okay, fine. I love steak. Okay, really? Okay, um, good. I think it was called The Gate. Okay, fine. And like, big steak, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's probably big enough for two people. Fantastic. But then, you know, cutting there, the texture, the color, how it was cooked and how it was Paired. Okay, so like a steak connoisseur, that's that's your go-to, is that's, it? That's me. So yeah. if your ideal meal out would be a steak dinner? Steak dinner, yeah. Oh, yeah. very I try not to eat too much red meat, because you know, with all the ingestion and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still. But it's still that's like... That's my number. There's my something about a steak when you've just mentioned it now, and I'm like, actually, I could go for a steak tonight mm. quite, quite mm. easily. Mm. And there's some great restaurants about yeah. Uh, yeah. for it. I just thought I'd... Um, change up the pace a little bit, uh, Nathan, and ask you a few quick fire questions, okay? So with these, just try and say the first thing no that problem. you think. No uh, so, um, rugby or football? Oh, okay. Uh, quick fire round. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, like, oh, I'm gonna upset so many people, bro. <laughs> I don't know, I think I'm gonna have to choose rugby. <laughs> Gin or vodka? Gin. Oh, vodka's lethal. <laughs> if you had to choose, if yeah. you had to choose, starters or mains, or mains and desserts? Oh, mains and desserts. Yes. Uh, sweet tooth. Sweet, yeah. 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 <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And fine dining? Yeah. Or street food? It's got to be street food all the way. You just get those messy, sticky fingers. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Uh, 
Sorry. Yeah, no, we're fine, Diane. And sometimes it's like, are you allowed to have a conversation? <laughs> you know, with the white tape collection. I know you but, mean. You sometimes know, it can be a bit. I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and very lastly, uh, the yes or no question. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you teach someone style? Yeah, of course. Everything can be learned. Excellent. Everything Excellent. Yeah. I, mean, I think we've learned so much about. Uh, things uh, in terms of the world of uh, your world, in terms of uh, design, clothes design and, and food and drink. Uh, I thank you very much for your time oh, this you. afternoon. It's been very enjoyable. Um, and if you'd like to find out any more about what you're up to, where should people look? I'll probably, um, Instagram is the most one I use. Okay, cool. Um, that's why I do most of my updates, because I use that as like my CV, my online CV. Okay. Of what I'm doing, what I'm creating, and who I'm working with, and what's next. Fantastic. So probably Instagram. And uh, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, Nathan Palmer Bespoke. Fantastic. Oh, thank you ever so much for listening and watching. If you liked what you've seen and what you've watched, please subscribe, please comment, please tell your friends, and hopefully we shall see you on the next episode. Thank you.